the F-35 versus the J-20. Now, this might be the best matchup when it comes to technology, since the F-35 is gonna have the latest technology from the West, and the J-20 is gonna have the latest technology from the East, including the potential for AI to run certain systems in both of these jets. Stay at the end of the video to see which pilot and which jet I believe will be successful should these two beasts meet on a dark and stormy night. Here we go. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. It's Ryan, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot. Today we'll be breaking down the F-35 versus the J-20. And more specifically, if you're a pilot in one of these two beasts, what are you gonna see when you're up there in the air beyond visual range and within visual range. We're gonna put these things head to head, and at the end of this, you'll have a better understanding of which one would emerge victorious, get to stand up and give the victory speech after the engagement. Here we go. So let's start with some basic facts. The F-35 versus the J-20. One interesting fact about these things are they're both still in production. Now the advantage that the F-35 has is there's a lot of different partner nations. So this is a NATO-based aircraft. It's sold worldwide to a lot of different nations, which is gonna keep the supply line open for years and years to come. And I wouldn't be surprised if even in the future, the supply chain was able to be contracted out to countries like Japan, since that's already done with the F-15. The J-20 is obviously in production as well. There's some probably rolling off the assembly line right now in China. So you've got two aircraft that can come out of the assembly line with the latest and greatest hardware and software. So that means that most likely these two are gonna be the most formidable enemies since the engineers and pilots in the different test squadrons are constantly gonna be sending information to the supply lines to get things adapted to potentially be a better adversary for the enemy. The price of these two things is relatively balanced. The F-35 is gonna set you back a cool 115 million. The J-20 is gonna set you back just that, just 100 million, no big deal. At the end of the day, the maintenance on the F-35, in my opinion, without a lot of information coming out on the J-20, I think the maintenance on the F-35 will be easier. And the ability to run the F-35 and repair it after the pilots break it, how dare you, pilots break the aircraft. <laughs> I've never done that before. The ease of maintenance on the F-35 will be much easier in my opinion than the maintenance on the J-20, and we'll get to that in a second. So the J-20, you've got two engines, and now they're claiming that the engines running the J-20 are actually native to China. They're no longer importing engines from Russia to run that J-20, so potentially better maintenance with an indigenous engine that the engineers and the maintainers in China just have better knowledge of. And hey, the manuals are actually in their language. Whew. Do you imagine taking apart a jet engine in a different language? Of course you could do it. I mean, obviously I could as well. <laughs> And then the F-35 has that single engine concept, and that's a risky move to make if your engines aren't reliable, but these Pratt & Whitney engines are some of the most reliable jet engines that, from what I can tell, ever produced anywhere on planet Earth. And these things can actually send maintenance codes back to the maintainers prior to the aircraft landing so they can have the part ready to go. They can know which exact bolt to turn to tighten the thing up. They have all the details that are data linked to the maintenance crews. The range advantage on these things is gonna go to the J-20, which is gonna be somewhere over 3,000 nautical miles. The F-35, without any external tanks, you're looking at about a 1,500 nautical mile range which might not be a big deal if you've got the ability to aerial refuel, but the ability to aerial refuel might actually be taken out by the J-20 itself, but more on that in a little bit. When it comes to the payload of these two aircraft, they're a lot more evenly matched than the J-20 versus the F-22, which is surprising since the payload of the F-35 you would think would be less with one engine, less horsepower, pulling that thing into the sky, but that's actually not the case. The max payload on the J-20 is 28,000 pounds, so you've got an internal bay, which most likely will be carrying four PL-15s, which is a long-range air-to-air missile, 
And the J20 also can put a lot of things on the wing. It's got a delta wing design with the space for a lot of pylons, which can carry anything from more air-to-air -air missiles to air-to-ground ordnance. And then with the F-35, you're looking at about 18,000 pounds, which isn't too shabby in my opinion. You're able to strap on 1,000 or 2,000 pound bombs onto that F-35 or 500 pounders if you wanna be economical. And also a solid air-to-air -air loadout with the F-35 is gonna be part of that package. But the payload advantage goes to the J-20, which is gonna to lead to a heavier weighted aircraft, which might mean it's gonna impact its dogfighting capability. And speaking of the size of these aircraft, the differences in size is relatively staggering. So with the J-20, you're looking at about a 70 foot length. With the F-35, you're looking at a mere 50 foot length. So let's put ourselves in the position of piloting these aircraft, and I'll talk about it from each perspective, starting at beyond visual range. So at beyond visual range with the J-20, you're gonna be sitting on your high horse knowing that you've got PL-15s sitting about five feet underneath your feet. So at your fingertips, you've got telephone pole-sized missiles that you're able to launch at an adversary F-35. But that comes down to can you see that F-35? So as a smart Chinese fighter pilot, you're gonna have studied RCS diagrams, radar cross-section diagrams. And what you're gonna have known prior to stepping out to your aircraft is even though you've got these massive PL-15 sitting inches away from your feet, you know that their 100 nautical mile or so range, which they claim to be might not matter at all if you can't actually find the F-35. Because the F-35 is gonna have a radar cross-section that's four to five times smaller than your J-20 in certain quadrants. But what you're gonna to wanna to do as that J-20 Chinese fighter pilot is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you never turn the side of your aircraft towards an F-35. Doing that is essentially gonna be a death sentence to the J-20 at beyond visual range because the observability of the J-20 dramatically decreases as you get 50 degrees off the nose. Once you get 50 degrees off the nose, a lot of the bulges, yeah, I said it, the bulges, they start to show up in the radar cross section far more dramatically than anything would show up if the J-20 was pointed straight at you. There's a lot of bulges that actually run the different control surfaces that are there to actuate the ailerons and pitot tubes that are seen from a different angle are really gonna spike the radar cross section of the J-20. Now a lot of the research that's done on the radar cross section of the J-20, it's worth saying, was done treating the J-20 as if it had metal skin which is gonna pretty much reflect everything and just highlight where the big bulges are on that J-20. Can't stop saying the word bulges. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have metal skin. It's actually got radar absorbent skin and that might change the RCS, but it's not gonna change it so dramatically to make it better than the F-35. So you're gonna know as that J-20 pilot that the F-35 is most likely gonna have first detection opportunity. Now, if you're somehow able to get eyes on the F-35 using other assets, now you may be able to launch your PL-15 prior to the F-35 being able to launch its AIM-120. But that's debatable because the lack of numbers that are actually published on the reach of the PL-15, but experts have agreed that it's probably somewhere around 90 to 100 miles. But whoa, whoa, before you get a little cocky there, Chinese fighter pilot, I want you to think about the F-35 American pilot or NATO pilot, Australian pilot, whoever happens to be flying it in the South China Sea. If you're sitting in that seat, you're really banking on the technology. And the way that the F-35 is built is to integrate with every single asset in the battle space in a seamless function where all the SA, the situational awareness that you could possibly want is piped into your helmet and you're able to see friendlies, enemy, you're able to see different things in the battle space that you might not even think a fighter jet could see, such as health bars. Yeah, 
health bars. It's like a video game up there because the technology is so advanced in the F-35 that one day they probably will have the ability to have health bars or detection bars. How likely are you to be found by a J-20 or other aircraft? The deal with the F-35 though that is really going to be hard is the payload. So if you're carrying less of a payload than the J-20 and the J-20 is just mingled in among fourth generation fighters from the Chinese fighter fleet, it's going to be tough. So let's say one F-35 can take down five fourth generation fighters and one J-20. It's going to be a game of numbers because China, in a situation where the U.S. is going up against China in a fight like World War III, is going to send up about 600 yeah, 600 fourth generation fighters. That's gonna keep the uh, F-35 pilot busy for a while. So the priority for the F-35 pilot would be to sort through the fourth generation fighters, skip them as long as he or she possibly could, and target as many J-20s as they could, because the J-20, while possibly targeting the F-35, is most likely gonna be looking through the F-35 and trying to hit AWACS, tankers, and other strategic heavy assets. Heavy assets. Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> Lastly, we'll talk about within visual range. So you've thrown your spears at each other, and let's say for some reason no one emerges as the victor, and now you're within visual range, ready to joust like two knights meeting on a stormy evening. It's anybody's guess at who will launch first. It's gonna depend on visual acquisition. And the F-35 has so many sensors that you can actually see through the skin of the aircraft. So if you were coming in from a high to low perspective, you'd basically be able to see at least target symbology over the J-20. If it came underneath your feet, you'd be watching it the whole way as it passed underneath your nose, which is a decisive advantage for that F-35 pilot. And then when it comes to the size of the J-20, if they don't get a missile off right away, they're not going to be able to turn as well as an F-35. An F-35, when I think of an F-35 versus a J-20, even though there's some thrust vectoring involved with the J-20, you're looking at a situation that's going to be more like an F-15C going up against an F-16, especially with the delta wings and the canards of the J-20. They're gonna get one strong move that's gonna have a lot of nose authority. They're gonna bleed off energy so fast that if the F-35 pilot is able to get lock on with the helmet and get an AIM 9X off the rail, it's gonna be lights out for that J-20. But if the F-35 pilot isn't able to get that missile off right away and the J-20 pilot loses sight, I believe the F-35 is gonna have a decisive advantage with the gun as well. And the J-20 pilots are gonna have more of a mindset where they're missiles only. Shooting the gun in the J-20, my personal opinion, is that's not something that's gonna be practiced very much. And you're kind of looking at the mindset of like the F-105, F-106, F-4 when it was first created, not having a gun and relying on missiles only. That's just the thought I get when I look at the J-20 since it is such a missile truck and looks like it's built to just take out high value, large assets. It's not gonna get close enough to those assets to use the gun. So I'm believing that their doctrine and their tactics is gonna say, skip the gun and the F-35 pilot's gonna eat them for lunch. So this is definitely a formidable matchup when it comes to technology, probably the most evenly matched when it comes to technology and these jets rolling off the assembly line, being able to have the latest and greatest hardware and software, AI integration, and things that we probably haven't even heard about yet. Laser beams, freaking laser beams. It's gonna be second to none, and this technology is gonna be put to the test if these two jets were ever to meet in a hostile situation. But if these two jets were to meet, just the fact that the technology is gonna be so high in each one, I think the dogfight is gonna be over, or the beyond visual range engagement is gonna be over faster than a Twinkie disappears at a diet convention. <laughs> hey, what's up guys, Ryan here. Thanks for checking out that video. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I've also got F-22 versus the J-20. That'll pop up over here, check that out. And in another video that YouTube thinks you'll like, that'll pop up over here as well. I trust your judgment. Thanks so much for being here. Please do all the things. Crush that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.